as our last idea and our beginning of moving into talking about more efficient binary search trees, we're gonna talk about ways of balancing a binary search tree. Here we have two trees and we want them to be balanced. There's not a good formal mathematical definition for balanced, unfortunately. So in order to understand this, let's at least look at these pictures. I think everybody would agree this top tree looks much more preferable than this bottom tree. They actually have the exact same numbers in them, but this top tree has a height of one, two, three, and this bottom tree has a height of one, two, three, four, five, six. So double the height, really not ideal for our circumstances. So can I do anything to make this more efficient? Well, here's a strange idea. Let's go down to a simpler example. Here we have a simpler tree. What I'm going to do here is rotate in the tree, which doesn't really make sense as a word, kind of well if you can understand what we're meaning by rotate. So here we are performing a right rotation on this node nine. How is this a right rotation? What we're doing is we're going to rearrange a bunch of pointers and move nine into another valid location in the tree by moving its children along with it. So if I notice, if I was to take nine and move it, so it was then the right child of seven and move all of its children with it. So I moved this whole structure here and move it down to the right of seven, I still have a valid binary search tree. How, how is this a rotation? You should look at me now because I'm gonna demonstrate something with my arms, a very practical way to do this. What, what I imagine is that we're taking the edge from seven to nine, which I guess I should do with this arm because I'm mirrored in my webcam, and I'm rotating that edge down. So I'm taking this edge and rotating it down. And if we look, the, that edge between seven and nine gets swung down to the right of seven instead. We are rotating that edge downwards and to the right, or clockwise if you want to think about it that way. This is a right rotation on X. You are moving that node downwards in the tree. This is an easy example. Let's see if we can make our tree look worse and perform a similar rotation. So if we go down, all I've done here is I've added in one more node. I've taken up that spot I said was a convenient place for nine. So ignoring the picture on the right where I have the spoiler for what we're doing, what I want to do is I want to make nine go here and 10 will be there. And now where must eight go if I was to do this? Well, if I do that, there's only one valid location for eight. It's less than 13, less than seven, and then it is less than nine. So it must go here. So if we already have something in that location, we're gonna kind of kick it out of the way and add it in as the, as the left child of the node we moved down. This is always going to be an available location because the previous left child of nine was seven. By doing this rotation, I always free up that spot on the left of the tree. So again, we're, we're imagining taking this edge and rotating that down. So in this other example, that edge appears here. These two edges are the same. Maybe I'll even highlight them to demonstrate. But we need to do some finagling with that value of eight. Drawing these gets a bit tedious because of the fact that you need to make sure you get space to draw them in the tree. But the idea is we're always taking that edge or that node and rotating it right downwards. A very natural question might be, well, if you can rotate to the right, can you rotate to the left? You bet you can. So let's look at a left rotation now. Where we've already made this a bit worse because we've already seen that we can solve the problem in other ways. If we want to rotate this edge or that node, the three to six connection, down and to the left. To do that, I would move it into this location to the left of six, but I cannot put it directly there because five already occupies that spot. So I put three and two there. And then by doing this, I guaranteed free up the pointer on the right side of three because the previous thing on the right of three was six. So I'm going to move that node that was in the way, five, to be the right child of three. And notice in all these examples, we've reduced the height. In this example here, we had one, two, three, four, and then we have a height of one, two, three. That's convenient. So we have a height of four, and then a height of three. Here we have a height of one, two, three, four. So we have a height of four. And over here we have a height of three. That's nice. 
And in this first example, same thing. We have a height of one, two, three, four. So we have a height of four going to a height of three. That's really convenient for us. So let's look at the code for doing this. In order to understand the code, I actually like to abstract this picture because with the numbers, it's not obvious what's happening. So let's look at a very, very particular picture. Here we've symbolized both of the rotations in a single picture. So here if I'm rotating right on X, I'm going to move X down to be the right child of Y. X becomes the right child of Y. I keep whatever was on the right of C, that's going to hang around, but I'm going to move the previous right child of Y to be the left child of X. Let's verify mathematically that this is okay. In this example, the, on the left, A is less than or equal to Y, B is between X and Y, and C is bigger than X. On the right tree, let's verify that all those things are true. Well, we have that A is less than or equal to Y because it's its left child. We have that B, because it's to the right of Y and left of X, that has to be between X and Y. And what about C? Well, C is still bigger than X. So we didn't break anything. We can maintain our binary search tree property, so that's very good. I've done a bit of a cheat here, where I've just left the pointer to the parent for X as an upward arrow. It may be to the left and it may be to the right, but we're just going to keep that in the problem. The nice part about this picture is that I can also visualize the left rotation by going the opposite direction. In a left rotation, I'm moving Y down to be the left child of X. So it goes from being the parent of X to the left child of X. And then we need to move around the pointers as well. You could do the exact same sort of thing and convince yourself that it is working. So let's look at the code for what we're doing here. We're going to try to assign our letters to be similar. The one thing to be careful of, and I will highlight this and talk about it when we analyze it too. In my code, I wrote left rotate of X. This is because I don't want to have the sort of weird letters appearing and you having Y when X is a typical, more typical value. So we will need to be careful about swapping all of the X's and Y's. So in this example here, for right rotate, Y is the thing to the left of X, Y is the thing to the left of X, and B is the thing to the right of Y. What I'm going to do is I'm going to replace or this convenient method we used in delete called transplant, I'm going to transplant and replace X with Y. So X gets replaced with Y. Notice I don't need to do anything to A or C. The only things that are getting manipulated are the parent and B. After having transplanted the correct node, all we need to do is to assign B to be in the correct location and the correct parentage between X and Y. So all of that is doing this reassigning of the fact that X went from being Y's parent to Y being X's parent. So that's nice to see there. For the left rotate, it's very similar. The only difference is that we need to be careful with our letters. So I'm gonna even draw over top here. For the left rotate, I am changing this to be X and this to be Y. And this is only for the left rotate, so be absolutely cautious. So I'm doing a left rotate on X now. And over here, my X becomes Y and my Y becomes X. So what is going to get moved? Let's look. A is still to the left of X. C is still to the right of Y. B is the only value that changes. So Y is whatever is to the right of X and B is whatever was to the left of Y. We then do a similar transplant and then reassign the pointers exactly like in the right rotate. So this is the exact same. You just got to be careful with the letters because I decided to change it to keep them both to have an input of X. So these are our two rotations. These are two of the most standard ways to reduce the height. A very natural question is how can I use a rotation to reduce the height of a tree? I will have you guys practicing with that in the homework to try and figure that out on your own. I have not left an example here for you to do that. I want you guys to practice that on the homework. We do have several examples of seeing where it worked. So you need to try to find out what was special about those examples to make it work. We'll analyze this further when we look at red black trees in our next unit.